Welcome back. In this session, we're going to work with an Excel spreadsheet called Four Climate Stations XLSX. So if you go to the NRM338 data folder at the website, download this spreadsheet. And what you'll find is it has two worksheets. So the first worksheet is just called Sheet 1. And it has three columns, point ID, longitude, and latitude. And then the second worksheet is the maximum temperature for four climate stations in Alaska. So our climate stations are Barrow, Beddles, Fairbanks, and Juneau. And we'll work with these two worksheets in this session. So once again, go to the NRM338 website, the data folder, and download this Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is add that first worksheet from that Excel spreadsheet. So it's sheet one. And then we're gonna create a point event layer from this virtual table. So we've got a column of longitude and a column of latitude. So if we use the make XY event geoprocessing tool, we can make a virtual point event layer. I called it climate station locations. And we'll define the coordinate system as geographic coordinates NAD83. And the field representing the X coordinate is longitude. The field representing the Y coordinate is latitude. Okay, so now we've got a point event layer. What we wanna do is project that into the Alaska Albers coordinate system as a permanent shapefile on our hard drive. So we'll use the project tool to do that. So our input is our point event layer and our output will be a shapefile in some folder. So I put it in a folder called hyperlinks and then we would specify the output coordinate system. So in this case we want our coordinate system to be NAD83 Alaska Albers. And the result is our climate stations, I put it in a new data frame. So now this new data frame is the Alaska Albers coordinate system. And if we look at the table, we've got basically the point shape and the longitude and latitude and the ID of every point. So now what we want to do is we've got our second worksheet. We want to add that to our point attribute table. So here's our second worksheet, this maximum temperature. And if we look at it, we've got the maximum temperature in Fahrenheit and the minimum temperature, and also the name of each climate station. And then we also have a website for each climate station. So what we want to do is take this table and join it to the attribute table for our climate stations. And you would think that we could use the join field tool. So take the maximum temperature worksheet and join it to our climate stations based on the point ID and join these fields to our climate stations point attribute table. So when we try to do this, we get an error message, and it says the input spreadsheet does not have object IDs. So basically, this is still a, a spreadsheet in Excel, and it's not really a permanent table in any ArcGIS format that's permanent. So what we need to do is first use the Copy Rows tool to create a permanent GIS table from our Excel spreadsheet. So my input in this example is my Excel worksheet and my output table going to this folder will have a .dbf extension. I've got a permanent dbase table and it has object IDs. So now I can use the join field tool. So I can go to results and recall the join field tool. And this time we're gonna use our permanent table that's the dbf table. So join to our climate stations point attribute table based on the point ID. And it's always a good idea to look at the point ID in both tables to make sure they match. So we'll look at those. So for example, the farthest north one is point ID one, and that is Barrow. And the farthest south is at 58 degrees latitude, and that is Juneau. 
So we can use point ID and point ID when we do the join field. And we're going to join to our climate station's point attribute table. So if we open up the point attribute table, we do have our point shapes and then we have the information that was joined. So the maximum temperature, the minimum temperature, the station name, and a website that would get us to information about each climate station. Okay, so what we're going to do is use this website field to create what's called a hyperlink. So if I make this field larger, with a hyperlink what we want to do is if we visually click on our point, use the web browser and go to this uh, website all the way down to if we click on this point, use a web browser and click and go to that website. So basically what we have to do is specify for that layer we're going to use hyperlinks. So that's under properties and under display we're going to say support hyperlinks using that field. So that field is named website and then what action should be associated with that field. So open a document that's on the hard drive or open a URL that's a website. So then we would click on URL. So then basically using that field name, it'll go to that field and it'll expect that to be a website. So now we could use hyperlinks. And the way hyperlinks work is this launches a hyperlink to a website, to a document, or to a script by clicking on the feature. And we have to be within a fairly close distance to the point by default. So here I'm clicking on nothing's happening, still nothing's happening. And right there, it's showing me uh, what will happen when I click on that point. So what we could do is under selection options, we could increase that selection tolerance. So let's make it 30 pixels rather than three pixels. And that way our hyperlink, we don't have to get very close to the point for it to work. So then okay. So now as long as I'm within 30 pixels, it will hyperlink to that website. So for example, Bettles. So I click on it and a web browser pops up and it goes to that website, which is Bettles. And then we have all the information about Bettles from that website. So that's basically how hyperlinks work, is we've got a field, and the field contains some text, and that text could be a website, it could be a document on your hard drive, and then basically we specify that that's the field that hyperlinks are going to work with. Okay, so add a field called spreadsheet and make it a text field. And then we'll build calculator, give it that text. So now we'll try to make a hyperlink. If you click on a point, it will open that spreadsheet. So what we need to do is go to our properties. And then instead of it being a URL, it's going to actually be a document on the hard drive and then just change the field name that is associated with that document. Point would open that spreadsheet. This point will open that spreadsheet. It knows the path because I've already specified the path under file, map document properties, what's the path to that spreadsheet. So whatever folder path you stored your spreadsheet in, that's what you would put as your hyperlink base and then just OK. So now if I click on this point, it'll open that spreadsheet in Excel. And it says it's locked because basically ArcMap locked it when it loaded, but we can look at it read only. And then you have read only access to that spreadsheet. So that's how hyperlinks work with documents is basically you specify the file name and then under map document properties, you specify the path to that file name as a hyperlink base. 
Okay, so that's enough for this session. In the next session, I'll teach you how to edit points, lines, and polygons, and also tables in ArcMap.